Hi everyone, thanks for the intro. I hope you had a great first day. So today I'm actually with a very short presentation um, with what is new in Elixir. It's more of a dramatic reading of the Elixir changelog as we'll see with some nice bits here and there. So, so yeah, let's get this started. So the next Elixir version is going to be Elixir 1.11. And we are hoping the release candidate is going to be out this month. So we'll have the release at the end of this month or beginning of October as we, we planned. And some nice information, we have crossed uh, more than 1,000 contributors to the language. Uh, the whole ecosystem is nearing uh, 12,000 packages on Hex and we are almost crossing uh, 2 billion downloads, which is quite impressive because if I remember correctly, when we started the year, we had not crossed or just crossed one billion. So that's uh, really nice. So what are we going to talk about today? So there are some topics I want to cover, cover from Elixir 1.11. This is not a complete list. It's more like the most exciting things, in my opinion, uh, coming the next release. And we're going to talk about Erlang interop, uh, compile time checks, compilation time improvements, configure on time, and some of the new APIs. So let's get started. So Erlang interoperability. So in Elixir 1.10, uh, we, we started to require Erlang 21. And one of the reasons for that is because we wanted to integrate directly with Erlang's new logger. And we, we set up this basic integration and now we are continuing to improve on it. So in Elixir 1.11, we are going to get four new log levels, notice, critical, alert, and emergency. So we are now mapping to all uh, Erlang log levels, which map to syslog log levels. So, uh, so we are getting four new levels. The one, the one caveat here is that um, if you use those levels with the old Elixir backends, you're, they're still they're going to translate to some of the existing levels. So, for example, if you use critical, it's actually going to come out as error if you have an old logger backend uh, because of backwards compatibility reasons but there will be ways for you to extract this information if you want to. Um, another area that, that we are integrating better with Erlang, uh, Erlang's logger, is that we now support structured log as well. So we are not forced to log only strings. You can log a map or a keyword list. So another nice feature, thanks to the Erlang integration. And another feature that is coming, uh, thanks to the Erlang integration, is that we now get Erlang docs in IEX. So you can type H. If you type in previous releases, if you type H and an Erlang module, it would say, hey, this module was not compiled with docs. But now if you are using Erlang OTP 23 and it has been compiled with docs, we are going to show the docs. You can do like H gen server and it's going to show the docs for gen server or for a function and so on. So uh, this was uh, easy work from our side because the have lifting was done by the Erlang OTP team. So a huge thank you to them and a huge thank you to the documentation working group of the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation for coordinating those efforts. So that's it about interop. Uh, now let's talk about some things that are very specific to Elixir. So one of the things that I'm really excited about this release, this is an area that we have been working on for a while and we are, we are starting to see some continuous improvements and we hope that it will follow up in the next release as well is that we are adding more compile time checks. Okay, so one of those compile time checks are related to binaries. So let's take like five seconds and look at this code. Can you spot what is wrong here? So what is wrong is about, it's around here, right? So what is happening is that we have this variable called uh, ping that it's a binary. And we know that it's a binary because we have a guard is binary that is checking it, or we call the byte size function that expects a binary. And it, this code, it's wrong because when you are uh, creating the, a binary like that using the binary segments, we expect all the arguments to be integers. And here it is a binary. So, what, so if we execute this code at runtime, you're going to get an argument error. And the fix is to write this instead. So with Elixir uh, 1.11, uh, you don't have to wait to get a runtime error. The compiler is actually going to let you know that. It's going to say, here's the whole warning. As you know, at this point, we have very long warnings because we want to be very specific and very clear about our 
uh, error messages. So you don't have, if you can't see everything here, it's fine. But the idea here is that we, you're going to get a warning that says, hey, you know, you have this thing that we know it's a binary because you called something like uh, is binary on it. And we have this expression where we're trying to use it as an integer and that's not going to work out. So uh, you don't have to do anything. We're just looking at existing code and say, hey, this is going to go wrong and you are going to let you know about it. Another compile check coming at Elixir 1.11 is related to maps and structs. So if you write this code today, um, so you pattern match on a struct and then you access the struct field using the dot syntax and that field does not exist, this code compiles just fine and there is no warnings, right? But when you run this code, it's, you're going to get a error message saying there is no such field, right? If you were pattern matching on this field, then you would get a compilation time, but not written like this. Good news is in Alex 0.11, now we are going to track the struct usage throughout the function life cycle. So if you write this code, now you're going to get a warning. Again, you don't have to wait for runtime. At compilation time, you're going to say, hey, you know, uh, this field is undefined. It does not exist on this struct. Um, so that's another improvement. Another improvement that uh, it's really nice uh, is that we are going to check application boundaries, right? So let's look at this code. What is wrong with this code, right? We are calling the crypto module and which exists. We are calling the strong random bytes function that exists and passing a valid argument, right? What is wrong with this code? So this is a tricky question. For us to answer what is wrong with this code, we need to know if the crypto application is a dependency. Is our current project depending on crypto? Because the thing is, crypto is part of the Erlang standard library, okay? And so you can just call it at any moment, right? But the issue is, if you call crypto but do not depend on the crypto application, when you build a release, the release is only going to keep the applications that you use. So the release can remove the crypto application and now your code is going to fail later on. So, um, so this code is correct if you're depending on crypto, but it, it's not correct if you're not, independent, if you're not depending on crypto. So in Elixir 1.11, we are actually checking now, we're actually checking the application boundary. So when you call a module, we are going to see, hey, do I actually depend on the application that defines this module? And if you don't, you are going to get a warning with what went wrong and exactly what you need to do to fix it. And, uh, and this uh, is going to help us catch mistakes like that, but this is also extremely helpful for umbrella applications. Because in umbrella applications, we did not enforce the boundaries. You could call a code from a CD application that you did not depend on. And now you're going to, you are going to verify that and it's also going to help avoid cyclic dependencies between umbrella applications. So it's a really nice change too. Um, so let's move on to the next topic. And I want to talk about compilation time improvements. So we did not only make made the compiler smarter, but we made it faster as well, okay? So, and that's what we're going to talk about, compilation time improvements. And in order to talk about compilation time improvements, we need to talk a little bit about how Elixir track dependencies between files, right? Because when you change a file, Elixir may need to recompile other files because of that change, right? So that's why sometimes when you change a single file in your project, it says, hey, I'm compiling 20 files or in more extreme case, it says we are compiling 90 files, okay? So the way in Elixir 1.10, the previous versions, right? How did it work? So if I'm defining module A in the file that depends, that's using module B, that is defining another file, we have dependencies like this. So if I'm calling B do something inside the module A body, outside of a function, but just in the body, that's a compile time dependency because I am calling B while I'm defining A and defining its functions. Similarly, if I import B, because the import needs to know which functions B defines and B defines and so on, um, it's a compile time dependency too. However, if I call B inside a function, that's a runtime dependency. Okay, and uh, and and the thing is, if A has a compile time dependency on B. Every time B changes, I have to recompile A. But if A has a runtime dependency on B, if B changes, I don't have to recompile A. That's fine, right? So that's, so that's why we have those two levels to track things. Elixir 1.11 makes one very small change to this, which is now that imports 
they are no longer compile time dependencies. We say that they are an export dependency. And basically what it means is that we are only going to recompile A if B changes and it is changing its public definition or it's adding a function or it is removing a function or adding a struct field. If you're simply changing the function implementation, then we don't no longer need to recompile A. At first, this may look like a small change, but the thing that we have to keep in mind is that those dependencies, they are transitive. So if A depends on B at runtime, that depends on C at compile time, A depends on C at compile time, right? And therefore, when we convert, when we convert an import from compile time dependency to an export, we are closing this transitive dependency. We are making the graph of transitive compile time things much smaller. So to see an actual example, okay, we can go to the Hex project. And in Atlix 1.10, if I change the user file and compile the project, it required 89 other files to recompile, right? And this is because user, you know, it's a core part of application. There's a lot of things that are calling user, okay? But in Atlix 1.11, so we just change the Elixir version. You don't need to change anything else in the code base. When we touch the same file, it's going to compile only 15 other files, exactly because of this change or how we are tracking stuff. Okay, so this is going to be a really welcome improvement to large applications that are having um, large recompilation cycles. Not only that, not only we improved uh, how we are tracking things, we also improved the visibility that we are adding to the whole recompilation process and the compilation process. So now, for example, Nix compile gets a profile time flag, so you can see which modules are taking the longest to compile. Uh, mix X ref graph, which is graphs, which is, which the, shows you a graph of dependency between files and when it's recompile, is getting a bunch of new options and flags exactly. So it makes it much easier for you to pin down exactly what is happening. So a uh, very nice additions that is going to help uh, maintainability of large projects. Another feature coming in 1.11 is config runtime. So um, at the beginning of time pr from Elixir 1.0, we had this configuration file called config slash config. And this was and is uh, until today, the main way of configuring Elixir applications. Elixir applications. So uh, whatever you do here, it's going to configure your mixed projects, going to configure our releases. However, this configuration file has one big downside, right? Is that it is compile time configuration. This file is executed before we compile the project, okay? And this has brought some issues that we've learned with time as a community, right? So, um, and so for example, the issue with compile time configuration is that there are some configurations or maybe most of the configuration that you only know the value at runtime when you are deploying the thing in production and not when you are compiling it. So to solve this, when we introduced releases to Elixir in version 1.9, we added a new file, config slash releases, right? And this new file, it works at runtime. So it, we read this file uh, before your application boots, but after it is compiled and it is available only for releases. So the idea, so this was really helpful and people really enjoyed this addition and gave the desired flexibility for releases. But now we have this gap, right? Where, you know, we have this compile time configuration that works for mix. And then we have this runtime configuration that works for releases, but we have this gap in the middle. And the goal of config runtime is exactly to close this gap, right? We hope that it's going to eventually phase config releases out, right? So now we are going to have two things. You're going to have the config file, which is compile time and works for mix and releases. And then we're going to have config runtime that works for mix and releases, but it's only at runtime, right? And the config runtime has many benefits, right? So one is that, so today, whenever you change the config file, it, you have to recompile the whole project, right? Because you may have changed a compile time configuration. But with config runtime, since, since it's only about runtime, when you change it, you don't have to recompile anything. We just start the project again, right? Uh, it can rely on application code because it is called after all applications have been compiled, all dependencies have been compiled. So now we can call application code. So we can do that, but there is, we need to do that carefully, right? Because 
the applications, they have been compiled, but they have not been started. So you cannot call a process from that application and so on. So, you know, there are, it's a benefit, but there is a important uh, gotcha in there, right? You can only call modules. You cannot depend on any of the services. Um, another thing is that because config runtime works both for releases and mix, and when you're running a release, there is no mix. You can no longer do like mix.env to get the env inside such configuration file. For this reason, we have, we have added config underscore env and config underscore target that works for all configs, but that encapsulates this aspect nicely. And we, no, we are no longer leaking mix concerns throughout all of our configuration files. And our hope is that it's going to become the main source of configuration in the long term, right? It's too early to say it has not even been launched yet, but uh, that's the hope. Uh, it's, it provides much saner defaults uh, across, uh, across the board. And finally, to cross, uh, to, to, to finish uh, this talk, I want to briefly touch some of the new APIs that are coming in Elixir 1.11. So, um, for example, we added uh, is struct and is exception guards. We have also added in Elixir 1.11 uh, support for calling map.field in guard. So, if you want to access a map field in a guard now, it's going to be possible. We introduced calendar strf time. This was actually the first feature to, to land for Elixir 1.11. And what strf time does is that it does daytime formatting. So, if you're using a dependency, only because you need a daytime formatting. With Elixir 1.11, that's no longer going to be necessary. And it is called SRF time. It's a weird name, right? But SRF time is the name of a standard for string formatting uh, that's usually, um, it's used by a lot of languages, right? So C, Ruby, uh, they use this format. So uh, that's what they're using. And that's, that's why it's named like that. There are other standards, uh, but we're supporting SRF time right now. We have also continue, continue with our usual improvements to the calendar module. So now we got beginning of month, end of week. Um, we have got conversion from and to Gregorian seconds to many of our APIs and so on. And we have added a new task called mix test coverage. And uh, so in Elixir 1.10, we added support for partition tests. So for example, if your test they uh, cannot run concurrently for a reason, or if you have a very long running test suite and you want to spread it apart on CI. So for example, you run it on four machines. We, we added partition tests, but the issue with partition tests is that if you partition the tests, then the coverage is no longer correct, right? Because um, you, have, you are running it in four different places. So with mixed test coverage, you can actually now get all those coverage reports together from the partition tests and generate a final report with everything considered. You can also use it for umbrella application. So in an umbrella application, um, if you want to get the report of the whole umbrella project instead of each individual app, you can also do that with the mixed test coverage task as well. So that's it. That's what I wanted to share uh, for today. And uh, I am personally really excited about this release. Uh, last year at Elixir Conf, I said that you know we have no new planned features, and some people, to, uh, and despite my best attempts to clarify that, some people thought, oh no, like there is feature free. Elixir is feature frozen, right? Uh, and that's not the point, right? Our point is that we are not focusing on like very user centric features, but we want to focus on the infrastructure, right? We want to, to focus on the compiler. We want to focus on doing more checks, on making the compiler more useful for you without you having to do anything. And, and sure, we are still going to add small features like calendar staff time here and there, but the focus is really on the foundation, the infrastructure, which I think is very important. And I think this release showcases really well uh, our, that, that that's exactly what we plan to do and that's exactly what we are doing. So, so that's it. Unfortunately, I believe I don't have time for questions, but uh, feel free to ask me um, in the app and I can reply online. And feel free to let uh, me know or the Elixir team know as well which of those features you are most excited about. Thank you very much.